with mobile phone data usage skyrocketing and plenty of other technologies all looking to tap into the network, there's a lot of questions about what the next generation of wireless communications technology is going to look like. How do you go about supporting the increasing amounts of data that fly around every single second? 6G mobile technology. That was the subject of a recent report by the Parliamentary Office of Science and Technology. And in this video, we're going to break that report down. What technology is 6G going to support? Why is 2025 a defining year for 6G? And are there ways that 6G can be better than the generations before it, more than just being faster and stronger? Well, together, let's find out. Mobile phone networks have a long evolving history of supporting the technology of the day. 1G was the first analog mobile phone network introduced in the UK in around the 1980s. 2G brought in texting in the 90s. Then after the millennia, we had 3G, which improved data speeds. And that kept improving all the way through until we had mobile broadband, which is the 4G we have today to send and receive the copious amounts of data flying around. And building on that in some areas, there is 5G being deployed as well. So following the pattern, we can know that 6G will- Hang on, let's not get ahead of ourselves just yet. Hasn't 5G been having some problems? Well, yeah. Let's go through this fast and put the tinfoil hats to rest. The rollout of 5G hasn't been a smooth one. There were some delays due to concerns about public health, and although there is no confirmed evidence that 5G poses a hazard to public health, the idea or myth at this point hasn't quite gone away. Words like microwaving and beam forming still get the general public kind of anxious, and so have been excluded from a lot of more recent 5G messaging. Still, some local authorities have had lingering hesitancies about the projects, which has slowed down their deployment. However, on top of this, a lot more disruption came from the removal of Huawei equipment, which underpins a lot of 5G networks right now. This removal is due to be completed by 2027, and is coming about due to security concerns and Huawei being deemed a high-risk vendor. Finally, a lot of the 5G equipment currently in the UK relies on the older 4G tech. 5G isn't yet a standalone system, and it's not expected to be that until at least 2030 here in the UK, because, well, all of these delays and just because upgrading an entire nation's equipment takes a while. It will be a vital step though, because mobile data usage is rising. From 2022 to 2023, annual UK mobile data usage increased by around 15%. So there is clearly a rising demand, but it's not just from mobile phones. You can think of 4G and 5G as supporting technology of today. You can think of 6G as supporting the technology of tomorrow. Autonomous vehicles, smart cities, virtual reality headsets, these things that were once science fiction are becoming a reality. This means more devices trying to connect to the mobile network, demanding a greater capacity from it. But these devices also rely on exchanging lots of data fast, which is going to demand a lot more bandwidth and a lot lower latency. After all, you don't want your autonomous car that's reliant on the internet lagging out. You can almost forget about mobile phones. It's these sorts of technologies which the people involved with 6G, looking ahead at how it's gonna be developed, that's what these people are thinking about. And there are a lot of people involved in thinking about this because mobile technologies are relied upon all around the world. So you need people from all around the world to reach a consensus on it. If you want an idea for how many people are actually getting involved in this, then we can turn to the International Telecommunications Union. It's an agency of the United Nations that are focused on this very topic. Involved in it are every single country, various universities that are spearheading the research, and over a thousand private organizations and companies which are somehow involved in telecommunications. It's this vast group that actually decides the standards of 6G, how fast it's going to be, how much data is going to be able to flow along it, how much the delay is going to be. Oh yeah, and they're deciding this because we don't know yet what 6G is going to look like. Let me explain. So that all of our technology can work together, there are certain standards, certain, I guess, key performance indicators, KPIs, if you will, that are going to be put in place for each generation of technology. 
So for 5G, the standards it has for speed, network volume and latency look like this. These standards are what the ITU will be needing to reach a consensus on for 6G. Now, depending on who you ask, there is varying ambition on how big of an improvement is going to be made, how big the leap from 5G to 6G is going to be. But compared to 5G, the standards of 6G can kind of be expected to look something like this. 10 times the user speed, reportedly up to 20 times the peak data speed, a massive 1000 times increase in data volume, and up to 10 times shorter delays. To do all of this, 6G tech will likely make use of the higher frequency parts of the electromagnetic spectrum, compared to the radio waves and microwaves that much of the tech uses now. There's going to be a trade-off here for countries that already have assigned those parts of the electromagnetic spectrum towards other uses, most likely military and defence uses. If 6G starts trying to use the same wavelengths, then there's going to be some challenges to who can get access to what, but that's something for countries to organise individually. The ITU doesn't have to worry about that quite as much. They just have to focus on defining these standards, because these will define what 6G is for the world. That process, the development of 6G, is seriously kicking off this year, 2025. Ericsson, a major telecommunications developer, as well as the ITU, are expected to start and also conclude many important studies about the move from 5G to 6G. The research is going. That means that this year, 2025, is kicking off a defining period for 6G. Development may take a couple of years, but the goal is to have a defined standard ready for commercial operation by 2030, which is only five years away. From that point, it can start deploying to support smart cities, autonomous vehicles, VR headsets, and everything in between. Maybe things that we haven't even dreamt up yet. But one final question. Can 6G be more than just faster and stronger? There are other challenges in the world that this industry intersects with, beyond just more devices getting more and more data hungry. There's the digital divide, the gap between people who have access to internet and all the technology that that brings, and those who don't. There are sustainability concerns surrounding the energy efficiency of our tech, and there are security concerns over our data. It's problems like these that the UK government's 2023 wireless infrastructure strategy is looking to highlight. And some researchers think that looking at these issues of sustainability, accessibility, and security would maybe be, be more beneficial to society than just a faster and stronger internet connection. Now, how much will the UK be able to get these priorities across into the ITU and to the wider world? Well, it might be tricky. We've seen that the ITU is a big group. The UK might not necessarily be a big voice in it. The UK lacks a big influential telecoms provider like Huawei or Ericsson that we've already mentioned, and that's going to limit the UK's input. Yes, it does have a strong research base and a strong financial investment. In fact, by the end of the 2024 to 2025 financial year, the UK government will have invested an initial £100 million to develop 6G technologies. But will this be enough to encourage a security by design approach? Enough to see balances made between performance and energy efficiency. Enough to ensure accessibility between land and satellite networks so that people can actually gain internet access who haven't yet. 6G is going to be influential, but there's a lot of lingering questions like these. Whether 6G will be defined by more qualities than just its speed and strength? Well, only time will tell. Thanks for watching this episode of Science Fairs. We are so glad to be back. If you enjoyed the video, then be sure to leave it a like, and if you want to see more of these to be informed on the science informing today's policy, then subscribe with notifications turned on. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you in the next one.